I'll try and knock it over a little bit more, dude. And welcome everybody to AlexNav.com for the Game of the Year Awards 2016. I'm your host, Chad, and I'm joined by Jason and Toby, and we're going to run down for you guys the best indie game of 2016. And, uh, dude, I just want to say there is a shit ton of indie games out there, so it was really tough to kind of break it down here. We got quite a list here, so we're going to go down, we're going to chop them off, the, the, hit them on the chopping block a little bit, and see what we end up with. We got Stardew Valley, Devil Daggers, Let It Die, Layers of Fear, Salt and Sanctuary, a little game called Severed, if you haven't checked that out, Dead by Daylight, Oxen Free, Overcooked, Pony Island, which was a pretty wild adventure, Enter the Gungeon, Inside, and Super Hot. So, if you've played any of all of those, please follow along as we destroy them. <laughs> and if you haven't played them, play them. Yes. I think they're all good, but I think that's like Enter the all... Gungeon, I think, is the first one that has to go, because we've already established that it's not as good as that formula. Yeah, I, yeah. to me, this comes down to Super Hot and Inside. Like, to me, those are the two. I'm going to just... I'm down to let it die, though. I really also... yeah. Stay in. I really liked what Let It Die did. Um, Just for the after stage recap. Is Let It Die indie game though? So. It wasn't one of the best innovations I would say of the year if we had that category back. But uh, it is wait, Let It Die I mean, best innovation? A free the, play game? No, the at the, uh, after, after the level. Oh, after you okay, do it, gotcha, and gotcha, like the little gotcha. the map goes it's, around. It's, and, yeah, yeah, that was it's so really awesome. cool. Yeah, no, I, I like so, so many times. Like, like, people, so many times, like it's downloading and you don't realize it because you're like, oh yeah, yeah, you want to see where you're going. But Let It Die indie game. Let's establish that first. Suda's not an indie. That's like Suda Fifty One is not an indie developer. Grasshopper, Grasshopper, I would I not consider. I wouldn't indie. call that a triple A studio. I definitely wouldn't. But I mean, but I also wouldn't say it's the best indie game. They all. They. I mean, up until this point, they've always released full price games. So I mean, it doesn't mean they can't suffer a fallback in one year and go indie. Well, I don't it's think they're going indie. Always... I just think they went free to play because they can figure they what. Can yeah, I mean, I guess I don't really know a lot of you know. What developed like I would say like Stardew Valley was made by one guy and, and he doesn't it's have a major indie. publisher. It's I think if you don't have yeah. a major publisher, that makes you more indie. Oh, okay. but I would still consider a lot of die indie. I wouldn't consider sure. AAA. I, I de mean, definitely. That's would, kind of more. I go I against that. What I was thinking of it, but no, I mean I get what you're saying too. But is it gonna make it either way? Probably not. Well, because yeah, I mean so it should make it for that cool. It does <laughs> one thing really well. It's free. Play. It. It's that simple. Yeah, but it's not gonna make. The Goodbye. The only time I can tell if it's an indie game is if it's not full price. If it doesn't have a full price. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that, that, that's like a thing. So free! So, like, No Man's <laughs> Sky looks like an indie game, had like 60 people behind it. I would never consider it that because Sony backed it. Yeah. And they published it. Devil Daggers. Not much to it, but damn, it's a what fun, a fun That was yeah. a fun weekend with that game, dude. Going back and forth on that thing. That was <laughs> just, really it was cool. just, I wish it had more to it. Did you guys play Stardew Valley? No. I, um, you yeah, guys I, love. Harvest don't, Moon. Don't even say it. I knew you were gonna. Why would you never? Wait, when have I ever said I loved Harvest Moon? I, I loved Harvest, Harvest Moon when Moon. it originally came out. Yeah, that's on, it. On the Super Nintendo. Yeah. All right, that game is actually. I played a little of it. I thought it was pretty cool. I don't like Harvest Moon. Not my cup of tea, but I could see why do people you, would do. Do you build towers and plant? You do it. All. Yeah, you do. You do it. All. You pretty much do everything that was ever in a Harvest Moon game up until 2015. It's all inside one game with the same graphics. Um, Severed is a cool game by Drinkbox. The guys that did Guacamelee. Okay. And it came out on the Vita, and I didn't play it until it came out on iOS. And it's a, it's a like a swipe up role playing game, cool story, great art style. I'm gonna knock it. It's really fun though. You should check. If you like Guacamelee and you like those guys, it's got that same so kind it, of humor and style to it. Is it Metroidvania like Guacamelee? Or no, it's a first person okay. kind of move through an environment kind of situation. Nothing like Guacamelee. <clears throat> Soul and Sanctuary will take off the list, but I do recommend that if you are a fan of Dark Souls and you're a fan of side-scrolling Metroidvania-style games, that you definitely check that fucker out, dude. It does every one of those things justice. I'm glad. The, yeah. the, the graphic, the art style is awesome. The weapons, the, the armor, everything is just amazing, but um, it's just... Let me knock a couple out here. It's too big of a deal. Oxen free. Tristan. Dude, Jason's going Tristan. for the KO, dude. Well, what a waste of time. Tristan's favorite game. He loved Oxen Free so much. I played it. I didn't like it. It was from the X-Tel. Did you have a chance to check out Axel it was, Free? It was okay. It's a tell I didn't like it. Dead by Daylight, I think that game was awesome. I wish we would have played it as a crew. It's basically Friday the 13th, the game. One person hides. One, four people hide. One person's a killer. And the killer has to kill everybody. It's fucking awesome. But we never played it as a crew, so... Did you ever kill anybody? No. No. 
Um, and then we have Layers of Fear, which you and Amy played a lot of. Wow, dude. I did not realize that that was, like, an indie game, because it felt a really good production on that thing, dude. It was probably, and I mean, we could, we could, I'd hate to kick it off, because it's, it's extremely well done. It's probably one of the best first-person horror games that didn't utilize intense in-your-face, um, what, I, what would I think, scare tactics, like, yeah. uh, the, the jump scares. Like, it actually... Things changed around you where you started to feel it, and it was like a slow progression of, oh, shit, it's going to happen. And obviously, it had a door slamming here and there, but it had things. But it really, like, you turn the lights off, you put the sound up, and you turn this game on. It's going to it's gonna scare you, dude. And they did a really good job of, of stage design, too, as you're going through these rooms and, and you know, uh, dealing with the pictures and everything like that. And, like, the world is changing around you. You would facing one way, and there's like a, a beautiful room, and you turn around, and that room has changed completely, and it's mm-hmm. something else. And you're like, how... How did they do that so quickly? Like, you feel like you can kind of cheat the system sometimes. Yeah. And, like, things are... Yeah. Uh, dude, yeah. And it's a phenomenal game, dude. Ah, dude. All right, so we'll keep that one. Yeah, let's, let's, let's keep it on a little bit longer. I, I, I had a ton of joy with that thought game. Pony Island is fun as hell. Yeah. But that game was so fucking hard, I never beat it. And I never will beat it because it's it's too damn hard. And I don't think it's too... I don't think... I think it's hard in unfair ways. I think the puzzles are too challenging, and it's weird to say that, but... I feel like they're tricky or something. I don't know. There I, is something about that. Like I, I, that game I made, made me to, like so fucking mad, and I left, and I came back and played it, and then I beat a puzzle, and then I play it, and I just get stuck. And I was aren't like, you like a detective, or someone's hacking you, or something? Yeah, you're like hacking into an old arcade okay, yeah. machine, and it's really cool. The art style is amazing. Like it's an awesome game, but it's so hard, I just can't fucking beat it. I like I like hard. I don't like cheap. So. Yeah, I, I I felt like it was cheap sometimes. Like, like it didn't give enough sure. information. I like it hard. I don't like it cheap. <laughs> Does that work? I don't know. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> um, super hot. I'm probably the most innovative game on this list. Um, super hot. The fact that an indie studio is always like an indie studio. What really do we have left? Guy, is super hot inside and layers of fear. Fuck, dude. That's <laughs> tough. Inside was super good. Um, the end. I think the last 15 minutes are the best part of that game. The rest of it, I just think is okay. Dude, so I, I would take inside off. And I would say between Super Hot and Layers of Fear. Dude, my experience with Super Hot fairly recently, probably one of the most fun games I've played and didn't want to put down. Because yeah, really it's didn't. all action and it's all something unique that hasn't really been like it's and it, it, it rides on one gimmick. So it really, but it yeah. rides the gimmick really well and execute and it did something that I didn't expect it to do. The game is super short, but after you beat the game, it unlocks a ton of stuff for you to do, and that's where the game really fucking excelled for me. Because like I like the gold. puzzles yeah. in the beginning. The first puzzle stage is awesome. You jump off the top, you got a sword, and you got to take care of like all these like as polygon humans, like they're you know AI little robots, robots. Yeah. and you have to take it out, and then you have to figure out how you're going to do this. Every like, dude, you barely move your mouse, and a bullet just inches closer. It's every little input into that controller and game. That makes the game move with you. So you go fast, everything's going fast. You shoot it's, your gun, speeds up a little bit. Dude, the way the techno like the technological aspect of it, phenomenal, dude. The fact that an indie studio came up with such such a cool fucking, thing that no one else has done oh, before. Dude. I mean, to me that's like the The only thing it's is missing is about. some sort of fantastical or human like skin on it, dude. I'm not too big of a I know, I, like, I really wish it would have ended and you went into the real world. Yeah, and then you continue on that. But I get why maybe they didn't, because it has to run so smooth to get all this stuff yes. working. There's no like slowdown or anything. I'd say, dude, surprisingly, I think this happens every single fucking year. Is it like in December, one game comes out of nowhere, and this is why I always say we need to do it at the end of the fucking year. That's why we year. wait until January 1st. Because I might not, and it didn't come out at the end of the year, but I wouldn't have had a chance to play it, dude, if I didn't wait until yep. the end of the year. Um, I'll take that over Layers of Fear. Okay. I think I think Super Hot's yeah. the thing that was the coolest. I will be playing that later, so. <laughs> You'll never see him again once he starts playing Plus, that. it has the best uh, fake typing situ- situation in the history of video games. <laughs> it does, dude. You, know, you think you're typing, but you're not. It's, it's really controlling cool. you, it's watching you, just it's like really we are. Yeah. We're watching you. Turn around. Don't turn around. Continue watching. Because we have the best indie game of 2016 for you guys. After a long battle and amazing indie games this year, tons of stuff that came out of nowhere and surprised us and did a lot of awesome things. Dude. We're ending with Super Hot as the indie game of the year. Definitely check it out. It's not an expensive game. You can get it on the Xbox. Mm-hmm. You can get it on the PlayStation. It's like 30 bucks. You can get it on PC, dude. Get it. Check it out, dude. It's a gimmick. It's going to make for endless moments for the entire year. Thank you, Jason. Thank You're you, welcome. Toby. Best Indie Game 2016, super hot, and I'm going to try to fix the camera.